Hey there. Is your mouth watering? Because if it's not, I hope you'll stick around. In the next few minutes, I'm going to share with you a very simple and delicious recipe for preserving pickled eggs for up to four months and with three different variations that'll make them absolutely the hit of any party or family gathering. <laughs> Don't go away. Before we even get started on this recipe, I wanna give credit where it's due. And when I first found it, it was originally posted on the website over at Practical Self Reliance. I'll put a link to her website down below because I want to be so thankful for her originally turning me on to this recipe. Today we're going to make three different types of pickled eggs. And so follow me, they all start the same way and it's very simple. You can tailor the recipe however you like. But the first thing we're going to need is some boiled eggs, of course. Now, you could do it in a regular pot, just the way you're familiar with how to hard boil eggs. And if you have a perfect method, you use yours. I'm going to tell you how I have started to do it since learning from Practical Self-Reliance the way she did, and I agree with her. It is far superior, in my opinion, to regular boiled eggs. I've got a small canner here, and I also have an asparagus pot with this same type uh, scenario going on, where it has a lid, and it has kind of a suspended basket. That's exactly what you want for the type of boiled eggs we're going to make. In fact, we don't really boil them at all, rather we steam them. So if you've got a pot, anything similar to this, or even one of those fancy little um, nesting type metal wire mesh things that you can steam vegetables in, that would even work. But what you're going to do is put just about an inch of water in the bottom of this pan and then have the basket be suspended just over the surface of that water and it will make just the perfect amount of steam to steam those eggs into hard boiled eggs that have the shells just come right off. So the other interesting thing when you do it this way is that you're going to need to stack the eggs because they're not in the water at all. So right here I've got 31 eggs. You should need about 30 for this recipe because we're going to make three different kinds and you need 10 eggs for each of the jars that you're going to make. So I had 31 and I thought, hey, I'll throw in that last one just in case I break one or have some sort of something go wrong. I'm going to set these in here and just carefully start layering them until I've got all 30 eggs put into my basket and then I'm going to turn it up and let it get to boiling. Because there's so very little water in the bottom, it's going to boil very fast. In fact, let me go ahead and get it turned on right now. Uh, it's going to start boiling pretty quick. You don't have to add anything, but some people seem to think if you put a skosh of vinegar in that water, it kind of helps them from having the green that can form around the outside edge of that yolk. I don't know if that's true or not, but you might try that if you're interested. Um, and it supposedly helps them to uh, have their shells come off a little bit easier. So I'm setting these all in here, and as soon as I get them in here, I want you to come and look at this, how I've st stacked them all up. And once I bring that water to a boil, again, none of the eggs are touching the water, but once I bring it to a boil, I'm going to let it go for 12 minutes and then just turn it off. Okay, so bring it to a boil, let it boil for 12 minutes, and then just turn it off. Easy enough, right? I'll meet you back here in a minute. So our eggs are finished boiling now, and I've got them set aside so that they can start cooling before we go and uh, peel them. But now it's time to put that brine together, and it actually is the same base for all three recipes to get started at least. There's only one small tweak of an exception. I'll get to that in a minute. But this is a very simple recipe, and so I want you to just kind of memorize these ingredients with me. We're going to put equal parts of water and vinegar, and we're gonna put actually equal parts also, uh, separate measurement of the salt and sugar. So it's kind of easy to remember this. I'm going to put in for each quart of eggs that I make, I'm going to need 10 boiled eggs, okay? In a quart jar. For that, I'll want two cups of the brine, and that's going to include one cup of white vinegar, 
and one cup of water. And then to that, two tablespoons of sugar and two tablespoons of salt. All right, I've got those first four ingredients all added to this and I'm warming those up so that the sugar and the salt can completely dissolve. Again, that's just the vinegar, water, sugar, and salt, and we're letting them get all dissolved and incorporated. While they're doing that, which won't take but just a minute, I'm going to go ahead and get that onion sliced up that we're going to add not to this mixture but directly to each jar before we put anything else in it. These are just sweet onions that I'm using today. I like purple onions for their color, but these just have a great flavor, so. And they're the least expensive. All right, I have chosen three of my favorite jars. What I love about this recipe, and I wanna also have this be a warning to you, you cannot can, traditionally can, like a hot water bath canning version of keeping these. You cannot do that. Don't try. Don't think you can get around that rule. It's very important you hear me say that. Um, they will not have the acid from the vinegar penetrate deeply enough into the egg's center for them to be properly preserved where they are not able to get botulism and other things. So hear me say, don't try and can this. However, that absolutely makes it fun because those old jars from grandma that may not be used for canning anymore, like this one with the old style of lid that's metal with that glass inside, I can use that for this because first of all, the eggs aren't gonna to be touching the lid. And secondly, these are just going to be kept in the refrigerator and not canned so that it doesn't have to be sealed or anything like that. What you're going to do is put all of the dry ingredients in first in the bottom before we put eggs and before we put brine. In fact, the brine will go last, so just prepare mentally for that. What you wanna do is, however creative you're going to be with your spices, those all go in the bottom. And the one thing that stays the same in all of these, like I said, is about a half a cup of this fresh um, chunked up onion. So I'm going to go ahead and just put some in the bottom of all of these right now. And then we'll put the spices right on top of that. They go together very quickly when you're not trying to film a video. Whoops. <laughs> they, these go together actually very quickly if you're at home doing this on your own. All right, if I haven't told you already the three types that we're going to make today, I'm so excited about. Some are called golden eggs, and those are golden because they have turmeric in them and garlic, and they're just a really nice, savory flavor. Then we're going to have beet pickled eggs, and those will be pink. Your children will love that. So you'll have golden eggs, you'll have pink eggs, and then you're going to have traditional dill pickled eggs eggs and all of them will probably be a big hit with different family members but for sure they're going to look beautiful on your counter and if I hadn't mentioned this already this is going to last four months four months of preserving those eggs so you've got a lot of good things about this recipe that make it worthwhile for you to try I usually like to tap their tail on the counter to get them started but you can see that the peelings just come right off with no issue at all. That's why I love this method of boiling so much. So we're ready to assemble the first jar. And I've got my 10 peeled eggs, I've got my onion, and that's all that's in the jar so far, and I probably have more than half a cup, but that's all right. Remember that depending on the size of your eggs, you can fit anywhere between nine and 12 eggs, depending on how intensely you're getting serious about packing them in there. But before you put any eggs or brine in, you wanna put the dry ingredients. And for simplicity and ease of use, so anybody can do this, again, I have half a cup of onion, and then we're just going to put one teaspoon of each of these three things in. I'm going to put one teaspoon of whole mustard seed, not mustard powder. I'm going to put one whole teaspoon of celery seeds, and I'm going to put one teaspoon of ground turmeric, okay? Now let's pack as many eggs as we can get in there. The main goal that you have is to get as many in there, but you don't want to fill it so that it's touching the top. You want it to all be able to be submerged under the brine. So let's go ahead and get them in there real tight. 
after I peeled all of these I rinsed them well so you'll want to make sure you do that as well you don't want anybody to bite into a stray bit of the peeling that would just be the worst all right I've got my 10 eggs all carefully packed in there and I've still got just about a fourth of a fourth of an inch space at the top maybe an eighth of an inch it's it's a little tight and if I'm in doubt I can always take out that top egg but they all do seem like they're gonna fit looks like there's a little space down there in the bottom all right all we've got to do now is pour brine over this till it absolutely covers the top and we'll put the lid on We're going to store these in the refrigerator and they will be edible and good after 24 hours. I wouldn't recommend eating them any sooner than that, but they're going to be way more scrumptious if you can hold off and not indulge until they've sat for at least a week or two to soak in all those good juices. And like I said before, they should be good for up to four months, but if in doubt, throw them out. <laughs> you remember. Just to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and take off this top, top egg because I don't think I can get brine to cover all of it and still have a little eighth of an inch or fourth of an inch headroom. So I'm going to go ahead and just fish that right back out and we'll go with nine eggs in this jar. As you know, that brine is still very warm. So what I'm gonna do is just get that lid on very nice and tight. I'm gonna just kind of turn this upside down and all around so that that turmeric can get well incorporated throughout the whole bit of it. Looks like I got it. And then I'm going to set this on the counter and just let it rest until it's all kind of close to room temperature before I put it in the refrigerator. All right, you can laugh at me later, but I forgot to put the garlic cloves in. I needed to put four cloves of garlic and I had them sitting right here and didn't put them in the bottom when I had the chance. So because I took out, the, took out that top egg, I'm gonna go ahead and just stuff these in the top and just call it good. It's not gonna hurt a thing. All right, one down, two more to go. Now we get to use this pretty old Atlas jar from Grandma's with the bale top. For this one, we're going to make the traditional dill pickled eggs. So this might be the favorite. It's at least the most recognizable flavor. And it's almost the same ingredients that you would use if you were making dill pickles. And in fact, some people use pickling spice instead of mixing them like we are. I like using them just this way, fresh from the store. So we start with half a cup of onion like you saw already. And this time I'm going to remember to add the four cloves of garlic that it also calls for. So I've already peeled fresh garlic and I'm putting four cloves down there in the bottom as well. Then we're gonna put in one teaspoon of each of these. Mustard seed and then coriander seed and then dill seed, not dill weed, but dill seed and then celery seed. All of those are not in the ground form, they're in the whole, form, whole seed form. So let's go ahead and get started. And I love that each of these is exactly the same measurement, it makes it easy to remember. And also I would encourage you, you can get as creative as you would like. For instance, if you wanted to put in whole pepper, like uh, peppercorns, you could absolutely do that. If you wanted to put in uh, red pepper flakes, you know, you could absolutely put that in if you wanted a nice heat to it. I'm not a fan of the heat so much, so this is just perfect for me. Dill seed, here we go. I would love for you to put in the comments what you would add or detract or take away from this recipe in your version of this. All right, and here's that celery seed that just adds such a great taste. All right, and we have one other fresh ingredient that we're going to add. We're gonna put in some sprigs of fresh dill, and I am going to just put those right down in there with it. I wish I could make them pretty and have them stand up on the sides, but we'll just 
stuff them right down in there and now we're ready for those 10 eggs. Let's see if we can fit them all in. Here's one, two, three, four. This is so much fun. Your kids would love helping you with this, I'll bet. They'll certainly love helping you eat them. All right. There we have it. I've got clean hands. I'm going to try and get that to stick down in there just a little bit more. Remember that these will last up to four months if you don't have the egg coming out of the top of that brine. So you've got a couple of options. Either you can take that egg out now or you can let that be the first egg that you eat in about a week from now when these are to perfection ready for you to eat. And if you can't tell, my mouth is watering thinking about it. All right, I've got that wonderful bale top and I'm going to go ahead and just secure it. And we're ready with our second jar. Now, I'll set that up there and I'll talk you through this before we start our third. We're going to make just a slight tweak to a little bit more of that brine. We're making it the same way we did in the brine before. However, instead of that one cup of white vinegar to one cup of water ratio, we're going to actually put one cup of vinegar to one cup of beet juice. And that's going to give it that wonderful pink color. Now you can get your beet juice a couple of different ways. Either you can do the easy route, which is just buying a jar or can of beets at the store. It could be pickled beets, it could just be canned beets, it could be sliced or whole, it doesn't matter, but you can just use the beet juice from that and it will, it will work perfectly. Or you can grow your own beets or buy fresh beets at the store, boil them up and use that water. All right, we're ready for the last of the three recipes we're covering today. And again, I want you to comment with what your favorite version of this is because you can just go crazy with this, making pickles or, or pickled okra. Some of you love that. But this last one, we're using the beet juice to make pink eggs. That makes them extra special. And for that, I chose my grandmother's antique blue ball jar that will just make them one skosh more special. Of course, we start again with that half a cup of onions that are very roughly, coarsely cut up in the bottom. And this has very few ingredients. It's a different type of recipe than the rest. So we've made that brine with one cup of vinegar, one cup of the beet juice, and then of course, two teaspoons of both the salt, uh, I'm sorry, two tablespoons of the salt and the sugar. All right. Then we've got our 10 eggs standing by, but all we have to add to the bottom of this before we put those eggs in is just a little bit different. We're going to put in a stick of cinnamon. This one's pretty tall, so I'm gonna break it if I can. We're gonna break it and just put one of those in the bottom of that. Also, I'm going to put eight of these allspice, whole allspice in, and those are little round ones. I don't know if you've seen those before, but they're so pretty and they smell amazing. You see them a lot in pickled things and also at Christmas time. It's that wonderful aromatic smell. I'm gonna put eight of those in. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And you can put more or less depending on what you like. Then, in my grandma's little acorn shaped <laughs> thing here. I've got cloves and I'm going to put eight whole cloves in. So eight allspice, eight whole cloves. Let me put some of those in. Those are those ones that look like little billy clubs and they smell amazing. Let me get a couple more here. I think that's about eight. I'm not sure, but it'll do it for us. All right, now we're ready to pack those eggs in and then pour that special brine over the top. There it goes. All right, let's put some pink brine in.
Okay, again, I have an egg that's peeking out of the top of this, and that's going to have to be okay. Incidentally, it's already turning pink. It's that quick how these start picking up that dye. This egg on top is not going to last for months. They have to be fully submerged. Remember that. And in the refrigerator. So this is one that I'll eat probably a week from now after these have soaked long enough to have that good, good flavor, but I'm not going to let that go much longer or I'll regret it. So I'll put the lid on top. Let me remind you, you can get very creative with this recipe, but one thing you don't want to get creative with is the amount of uh, vinegar. You don't want less than half vinegar. You can go more if you like spicier and hotter and more tart. You can always change that ratio instead of being, say, half vinegar, half water. You could make it all vinegar and really have some squinting and, and, um, <laughs> and people with some tartness going on in their mouths. But don't ever go less than that halfway mark where you have at least one cup in here of the vinegar. Now, get crazy with the other things, though. As you're going to see over on the, the uh, website below where I got this original recipe, she likes to add jalapenos to her, hers. And because I'm not a big fan of spicy, I don't go that direction. But boy, it looks amazing for those of you who love it. There are so many varieties that you can do. I want to hear from you what your favorite variation on this would be. If you happen to have never tasted a pickled egg before, I do hope that you will at least be curious enough now that you make at least one of these variations of the recipe for yourself and just tell me if you don't fall in love because I think you will. And some of you have made many variations of this. We would love to hear in the comments just what you do to tweak the recipe to make it your own and make it extra special. And just in case you need more definition or clarity to the recipes that I shared today, Make sure to expand the, com or the uh, description section below this video on YouTube and hopefully you'll get the answers there that you might be looking for. All right, we'll see you next week. We've got lots of great stuff coming, but let me just encourage you to subscribe and hit that bell if you haven't already. Thank you especially to you patrons who support us every single week and month to make it possible for more episodes. And now it's my turn to encourage you to take the time this week, find someone who needs you to be their blessing and do exactly that. Go out and be a blessing to someone today. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye. Before you go, may I share just a quick word from the Holy Bible with you? I hope this encourages you out of Psalm 92, verses 12 through 15, it says this, The righteous flourish like a palm tree, and they grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord, and they flourish in the courts of our God. They still bear fruit in old age, and they are ever full of sap and green to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. <laughs> now go spread the word. <laughs>